Uh, the managed funds market in Nigeria started growing very rapidly in the early 90s. Almost all the banks had at least one. Then you have the market operators on Custom Street joining the fray. Then you have the, uh, the failed bank uh, periods. Many of the banks went down along with the managed funds. But we've seen a resurgence in recent years in which we currently have about 80 managed funds on our market street. And most of these are with managed uh, with uh, investment banks. So let's talk to investment uh, banker uh, at Kodros Capital, which is also one of the investment banks and security trading firm on uh, Market Street. Balahan, I know, is here. Thank you very much. Thanks for sharing your holiday period with us here. This is interesting. Almost on a daily basis, money funds now seem to be the in thing. The craze is there. We're close to 100, and it looks like there is still room for more. Absolutely. Um, really, um, we've seen growth. So if you look from 2013 to 2018, the mind fund industry has grown by 35% compound annual growth rate. And it's quite interesting. You mentioned 20, 1990, we saw a lot of interest. But the growth we saw came um, more towards the end of 2000. And basically, the interest rate environment contributed to it. Um, the financial, funny enough, we were saying financial inclusion before I came on. And it's quite interesting. So a lot of people that didn't know anything about mutual fund before, a lot of them are now participating in mutual fund. So certain things are contributed to it. When I said the high interest rate environment, now there's um, increased demand for specialized skills. We have a lot of fund managers that are coming into the picture now. Um, also, there's a lot of flight to safety. So a lot of people don't want to do equity investments. So if you look at the mutual fund industry, the most growth has been in the money market mutual fund industry. Currently, it has about 76% of market share. Um, oh, I thought equity is, is the king. No, 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 no. <laughs> so even if, if you look at from 2018, December, till date, right, all equity funds have declined. The ethical fund, the mixed fund, and the equity fund. But bond fund has increased, fixed income fund has increased, and money market fund has increased. Money, money market funds currently has about 561 billion in terms of under, assets. Uh, under management. Under management. Mm. And basically, people don't want to take risk. Um, also, people are short-term in terms of their investment outlook. Technically speaking, uh, Bolahan, investors are coming through the back door, in a manner of speaking, from the 2008 market meltdown, and they're looking at the interest rate environment. We were 14, we were 15, we're still around 11, 13, inflation, yes. So you think investors are not walking through the front door anymore, but they're coming through managed funds, mutual funds, and saying, look, I have this fund, if you can manage it, I want to look at you as an investment manager, then I think I can place funds with you. Please, let's go to the market through here. Yeah, really. Is that, that where the drive is coming from? Well, apart from that. But this really, is a new sentiment, type of mentality of investing these days. Well, funny enough, abroad, everybody invests through mutual funds or through index funds, right? Because they're giving professional money managers to manage your funds for you. And I tell people investment like a science, the same way you don't encourage some medication when it comes to taking medicine. So also people should not just be investing because they're like, oh, MTN sounds like um, a good name. Um, like I tell people, not every co good company is a good stock. Because when it comes to stock, it, things like pricing comes into place, things like valuation comes into place. Um, so it's not just how good so a company so is. So the company looks really sexy. does not really make it a very good company. If you, if so you go down to... does not make it a good stock. A good stock. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the technicals. Yeah, if you look at the technicals, the fundamentals, yes. and the valuation. Yes. So if you look at the mutual fund industry, like I said, currently it's 737 billion. Um, in terms of GDP, it's just 0.69% of our total GDP. In developed climbs, it is over 100% of their GDP. So in terms of penetration, it's still very, very insignificant. Look at mutual fund at the of household saving is still very, very insignificant. Abroad, that figure is about 30%. So rather than just investing directly into the equity market, I'd rather give a fund manager my money to invest for me. So apart from the fact that you have professional management, there's also diversification. Mutual fund with as little as 10,000, I can invest in any mutual fund. If that 10,000, you, you can't diversify your investment. You can't probably even do more than buying one security. But mutual fund affords you diversification. 10,000 naira in a 13 trillion naira equities, for example. Or in the debt market, it's going to just it's just going to disappear. Disappear. So I walk you through an I walk through an investment manager. So uh, there are costs and there are issues to be considered. So how do I play a bull and a bear market uh, if I'm an investment manager? Okay, so let's talk about the bull market. Looks like a very easy one, isn't it? But you can still <laughs> lose money in the bull market. You can lose money anyways, right? Um, so like I said, timing is key, entry is key. Um, like I said, not every good stock. Not every good company is, is a, a good, good stock. stock. 
then to be able to enter at the right price. Um, but in Nigeria, do we have a bull market? Not necessarily. May was a different month. It was exciting. And of course, it was the MTN story. Mm -hmm. um, when MTN was listed, about 1.8 trillion was listed. Before then, the market cap was about 10.5 trillion. As we speak, market cap is about 13.6 trillion. So we added about 2.4, 2.5. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, 1 trillion additional was added if you discount MTN. So sometimes there are some sentiments that follow when you have, um, everybody has waited for MTN. So really, it came in at the right time, right? So apart from MTN gaining, you saw the likes of Nankotan Cement start to gain as well. So there was like a knockout effect on the other stocks as well. Um, so in terms of playing the bull market, so I tell investors, one, that um, you need to have your objectives clearly outlined. Um, so really, am I investing for the long term? Am I investing for the short term? So that should be what drives you. That should be what drives what you're investing. Um, but for us, we clearly invest based on fundamentals, um, either of our mutual funds. So, yes, if the market goes bearish, yeah. and, and again, we're looking at a very... Uh, a, a, a new scenario emerging in which the authorities, technically the Nigerian government, yeah. is looking to reduce government exposure, re, uh, try to tame the cost yeah. of treasuries uh, and, and, and narrow bond borrowings. Yeah. And uh, perhaps the yield curve will begin to look a little bit different. Steeper, yeah. Uh, uh, steeper than, than, it, than it used to be. The government needs to tighten up his books, clean up a book. Central Bank has been seriously boarded, yeah. uh, paying very heavy price yeah. for, for treasury bills on one hand uh, and for defending the Naira at the FX market on yeah. the other hand. It's been, Central Bank has been bleeding yeah. very seriously. So, what, but results are still pretty much healthy. Yes, but, but again... An oil price, we expect oil price to still remain steady. You, you're very bullish on this, on, on, the, on the side. So you don't see any significant... Um, so there are risk factors. Concern there are concerns. For, for, for managed fund managers. No, no, there are, there are risk factors, there are concerns. Yes. But the beauty of um, portfolio managers is that they can always play in different asset classes. Hmm. So equity might not be doing too well. It can diversify into money markets or fixed income. So it's a portfolio, it's a basket. And you know, investments are not really correlated to each other. There is, there's negative correlation. Um, so sometimes I think equity is not a good time. I can put some of my money in fixed income or money market and still be earning. Um, interest, pending when I see, okay, there's about to be a resurgence, so I think valuation is right. So, how do you, so go back to your question, how do you play when the market is bearish? Um, so, one, valuation is very, very important. Also, you invest in stocks that have strong um, dividend yield. Um, at the moment, some of the banks are giving as much as 14% dividend yield. That is pretty much decent. And also, you diversify your investment. So, what other investment can you invest in? You're not going to have capital loss. So, treasury bills, bonds, are uh, some other opportunities that can put your funds in. You, you don't see any, any short to medium concerns, significant concerns for fixed income space? Well, so yields are going to come down. They've been coming down. and Vis-a-vis -vis inflation? Yeah, so yields will come down. But the way it works is that if yields are coming down, for you that are already holding that position, it's good for you. That means you're making profits and investments. So it's just for the new people that are entering the market that you are entering at a lower yield. Mm. So there's reinvestment risk. You're probably, when the funds mature, I'm going to reinvest as high as those instruments. Um, so probably you're carrying a treasury bill at 14%. When they mature, you probably won't see any 14% investment anymore. You have to probably invest at 12%. But to look at it in the other side, so we've been seeing a lot of commercial papers of recent as well. So usually when yields trend lower, you see a lot of corporates coming to the debt market. Dangote, Dangote, Nigerian breweries. So a lot of them are oil. fought oil, so mm. they're coming to raise debt and no commercial paper is short-term um, um, debt for working capital. Mm. So I don't think there's any major concern, because really if one asset class is not doing too well, you can always move into another asset class. So for whether they are um, local uh, or foreign uh, investors, uh, you think there's still enough room for carry trade? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Carry trade upside yeah. for, for in, in Nigeria? Absolutely, uh, in, yeah. So in, we've even seen a lot of people, okay, um, they have funds in foreign currency. They bring the funds and invest in Nigerian investment and convert back to foreign currency. Because mm. really, relatively, our yields are pretty much still more attractive than what you have over there in developed climes. If you discount exchange rate, inflation, exchange rate has and all been of stable, that. right? Yeah. Very, very stable. Um, thanks to the IRA &E window. And of course, within the one, next one, you're still expected to be quite stable. Um, reserve at 45 billion can still pretty much support about 30 months of import cover. 
So um, in terms of exchange rate outlook, um, within one year, I don't think there's anything to worry about. What are external uh, vulnerabilities or risks that you, 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 as an asset manager, that you, you're thinking of right now out there, uh, which could uh, buffet uh, 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 the market a, a little bit, maybe significantly, maybe over what horizon? Okay, so external, really oil, oil price is really a factor that every investor in Nigeria always consider because oil always more or less appraise our investors look at the Nigerian risk. Um, but in terms of oil, in terms of uh, near-term settlement, we still expect oil to be quite stable. Um, the sanction on Iran, um, the Libya sh shortfall. So all those things point to the fact that oil might still be steady, but of course there's still the trade war between China and U.S. Another factor is exchange rates. But like I said, we still expect exchange rate to be stable within one year. Um, what we also look at is the, the, the growth rate abroad. So most, most developed economies, they are to, tilting towards a dovish stance. Um, so that is good for us. If they were trying to be hawkish, and they're going to increase rates over there, and of course those funds that would have come here will probably go back to those So So, so with, the, with the Fed getting a little bit uh, impatient Dovey. with his patience, yeah. uh, and, and the likely rate cut, uh, on the card for 2019. What's your take on on that? Do you think that's positive here? Yes, I think that it's positive. Some... Yeah, absolutely, it's positive for mm. for the Nigerian um, investment space. Mm. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the numbers, uh, let's go back to the numbers. Do you think we, we're having enough mutual funds uh, at the moment? Do you think we need to slow that a little bit? Do you think uh, there is going to be uh, anytime soon a kind of overfishing the pond, as it were? No, no, Or no. you think there's still room for the more, the merrier? Absolutely. There's still a lot of room for mutual funds. Penetration is very low, um, so there's still a lot of underserved um, retail sector. There are still so many people that don't know anything, anything about, retail, uh, about mutual funds. People in school, people in rural areas. Even you find out that some professionals don't even know anything about mutual funds. So there's still a, a lot of room for, um, at least for the mutual fund. Like I said, in terms of um, when compared to GDP, it's just 0.69%. Mm. That figure is over 100 billion in um, some developed So, you folks still see a lot of room for making money yeah. there. Absolutely. Very interesting. Uh, interesting scenario. Well, uh, uh, stick around. We, we, we're done with our public holiday uh, uh, today. Uh, tomorrow, we're back in business uh, and we're left with just about two trading days in the week. We, we want to find out what, uh, what do we do and how should we, what's your playbook for the post holiday uh, uh, trading? If there's anything left. Uh, for the week. Before we go for another holiday next week, Junjo <laughs> Bolahan, I know investment banker at Codros Capital, is still with us uh, on the show. Uh, but let's uh, uh, try to put some of the conversations around the global market uh, place and the head scratching economic data over the last couple of days into some context. Uh, let's uh, uh, bring in Simon Apuse, who is one of our uh, correspondents in London, out of our London studios, to, uh, to weigh in on this uh, conversation. Uh, Simon, good morning. Uh, welcome to the program. We've seen a raft of a bit of a uh, not too pleasant economic uh, data inflation. The U.S. Fed says it's listening. A rate cuts on the on tap, and uh, the PMIs are not looking anywhere good. So, uh, what's the market doing on this, including the news cycle around trade tariffs, trade fights, and what have you? Yeah, good morning, Boson. Thanks. The global economy does appear, um, as you say, to be weakening. Um, the Global Bank says it now expects growth of 2.6% for 2019. That's edging um, up from 2.7% the following year. The slowdown um, is, of course, widespread. It's affecting lots of different countries, as you've been talking about on your show. The forecast means, um, actually, that it's the weakest growth for global trade since 2009 and the financial crisis then. And the, the World Bank joins um, a host of other organizations, basically blaming the economic fallout mainly on the ongoing U.S.-China uh, trade war. The, the reason is, obviously, between them, the U.S. and China, they account for a third of global economic activity. So it's a huge relationship they've got going there. China's growth is also expected to continue to slow. The country um, itself, the International Monetary Fund, has cut its growth forecast for China. It says China's economy should grow by 6.2% this year. That's down from 6.3%. Previously, the euro has also really been struggling. Inflation slumped to well below the ECB's targets of just under 2%. The pound is doing even worse. It dropped to a 20-week low against the euro, um, hit by concerns that Britain will crash out of the European Union on October the 31st without an agreement 
on the terms of its departure. Britain's construction industry had its worst month in more than a year in May as uh, customers postponed investment in the face of Brexit uncertainty in the sector, lost jobs at the fastest rate since 2012. Um, the IHS market um, slash CIPS construction purchasing managers index, as you mentioned there, the PMI fell to 48.6, the lowest reading since March 2018, when the country was, of course, in the grip of an unusually cold winter. So across the board, a pretty a gloomy outlook, like you said, Boson, going forward. Yes, so um, investors are leaning on central banks, uh, like we had in 2000 and 2009, looking at central banks now, to bail out everyone, provide some measure of comfort. So, uh, but let's talk specifically about the London market. Uh, what stocks are trying to uh, keep their head above the water uh, with uh, the uh, measure of concerns and worries that are weighing on everybody's mind and, and squeeze the pound into this conversation, uh, into this comment for us, Simon. Yeah, well, let's take today, for example, both in early London trading, the um, FTSE 100 is up 19 points at 7,233. That's around about 0.3% higher than it closed um, yesterday. Uh, one of the big movers is EasyJet, the airline, um, which is in a bit of trouble, um, as a lot of airlines are at the moment, and travel companies. They're facing possible relegation from that index, from the FTSE 100. It is um, among the leaders today. The company is up 3%, but that's probably because they've dropped so much in the past few days and weeks. The biggest faller today is Hargreaves Lansdowne, a financial services company. They're down 3%. Um, and that's the reason is the, the continued fallout from a decision to close one of the funds there. And that's a big controversial piece of news here in the UK that this fund has suddenly stopped um, taking investment. The FTSE 250 index is also up higher today, up 88 points um, at 19,097. That's around 0.5% higher. Uh, Provident Financial is the biggest gainer today, up 9% after non-standard finances hostile bid lapsed. In more general terms, the UK economy um, is close to stagnation, unfortunately. Data firm market, um, they reported, obviously, that PMI uh, composite index, which tracks activity across the UK private sector. They, uh, that fell last month to just 50.7 from 50.9. Car sales also slid in May. Um, they're down 4.6%. Um, the slowdown in the global economy um, and the impact of the Brexit crisis um, are both to blame. And also, it's all that news about trade and the US and Donald Trump and his Twitter feed and him getting into spats with China and Mexico and latest India and um, all of those things playing on the markets here. Yeah, very interesting. Simon, uh, keep us in the loop as the trading day in London uh, uh, keeps going for the day. We are on a holiday here in Nigeria, but it's business as usual here on Channel Television. Thank you so much, Simon from uh, London studios. So, uh, Bolaho, just to wrap up this segment before we go to, there's a bit of a headwind out there. It looks like May, it was not really a good month on the global economic front. So the World Bank quickly stepped in yesterday and said, look, we're revising growth a little bit. Everyone needs to take this warning uh, just uh, uh, very seriously. Yes, yeah, so um, you're right. Um, and um, like you said, um, World Bank revised growth estimates for um, a lot of economies. Mm, emerging and developing countries. Yes. And that's where we actually fall here in Nigeria. Yeah. Mm. Um, but on the flip side, while um, GDP growth was revised lower, so of course on the equity markets, we saw a rally um, after two consecutive uh, months of um, decline. Mm. The market picked up in, in, in May. Mm. And of course, in the month of May, it gained over 6%. And yet today was reduced to just uh, negative 1%. Um, do we think that going forward we are still going to see that rally? Okay, let's, let's, let's take that going forward after the break. Okay. Just let's post there for about two minutes. We'll take a commercial break. We'll write back everyone. Stand by. The screen is very simple. When funds are stolen from a country in, and London abroad, uh, the size of that money doesn't always come back the same amount the way it was stolen. It always gets a little bit smaller. And you can see that. So Abacha, the Nigerians, one of Nigerians, former head of state, late General Sonia Abacha, uh, part of the, the stolen funds that is stashed in, in countries abroad, the latest discovery, 267 million US dollars discovered on the British Virgin Islands uh, would not be coming the same size uh, the way it went out from Nigeria. That's what happens, you lose a part of that. So the money was taken from Nigeria, London to the US, finally found its way to the British Virgin Islands, $267 million. Now, this country says, sorry, Nigeria, you will not get that money back the same way it came. So it's going to be shared three ways. This was Nigeria's money, isn't it? Uh, but now we have to share it with those who are keeping the looted funds. And that's the way it works out there. So perhaps we'll think about it if you're taking 
a penny out of this country is not going to come back as a penny. Some folks who warehouse the stolen funds says they want a share of the stolen loot. Stolen money. Ah, listen, that's an interesting story. And that's the story that came through our public holidays. But when the markets are open tomorrow, we want to find out how the broad street will look like. Balahon, I know he's been on the program. Thank you very much. Let's wrap up the show together. What's your playbook for the remaining two days of the week? Anything significant or you think folks are just going to go through the Thursday and Friday and say let's say goodbye to this week? Yes, I don't expect anything significant. Um, so in May, the major cat catalyst was MTN. And of course, I think that sentiment has more or less died down. Um, so where, where, where is the next sentiment or when is, where, where is the next catalyst? So I think um, that wouldn't be this week. So maybe if the president comes and probably announces his cabinet, if he does it swiftly, if he does it fast. And in terms you think of we're done with the Orlando's rally? Oh, sorry, the, I mean the, MTN the, rally. Yeah, I, I think so. Do so, you think the rally is done? The I, market I, has taken it all in and it's now everybody just goes still on. Absolutely. Um, so for a lot of professional fund managers, they don't want to touch MTN above a certain price. And of course, it seems to have reached that price. Um, so we still see a lot of um, retail investors, HNI, still looking for a MTN. But of course, their demand cannot drive the rally in MTN anymore. In terms of price? In terms of Significantly price. higher. Yeah. So it looks like the market has talked to themselves and they said, look, this looks like the acceptable level for this, for this stock, whether you're coming in or you're going out. Absolutely. So I think the rally, the euphoria that we saw in the, um, when it was listed, I think everything has died down. I don't expect to see any significant rally again in MTN. Will, will, will the uh, developing drama between SEC and Wendo uh, be any trading theme for the rest of the week? Any likelihood? Well, so maybe the court just, accepting anyway. So. so maybe just to Wendo, but it's not going to be widespread. It's not going to affect the market. Yeah. Generally speaking. Yeah. So where is it? You're talking about the president's team that we don't know yet. Yeah, so I'm thinking if he's going to appoint his team swiftly, if he's going to be fast, and if he has maybe competent people on that team, that can bring about an impetus to the market. This is about three months since the elections. And that's not swiftly. Well, I'm thinking maybe it's going to be June 12. Perhaps. Perhaps, yeah. Okay. If that happens, you think the market will take something from there? Maybe the next finance minister. Yeah, so if you recall last year, um, when, the, when there was... Um, when the Cabinet was appointed, the market rallied a bit. Mm, that's four years ago. Yeah, four years ago, rather. Yes. The last time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you think perhaps that will happen this time around? Yes, but it's going to be short lived. It's not mm. going to be something that's going to last for a long time. Do you think the market will be looking forward to hear from the central bank chief what his next five year term agenda will look like post June 12th? Maybe we expect him to deliver a major document that will outline uh, his monetary policy outlook for. Or second term, do you think that's something for the market? Yeah, absolutely. That will help the market a bit. Um, what I thought concerning exchange rates, is thought mm. concerning interest rates, because all that affects um, how investors play the market. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, 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 Mifele will be a major uh, trading theme post June 12th, public holiday uh, next week. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what else? No earnings. Well, so earnings wouldn't start coming till um, later, at least for a few earnings. That's where prognosis of some companies declare interim dividend. Okay. Perhaps if you folks sniff around some big names. Yeah. As always. Yeah. As always. And price it in before he hits So, of course, straight. some companies are going to declare the interim dividend, but that one don't mm. come till maybe August. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. July, okay. August, yeah. That, that's interesting. It looks like a, a very good time out there. But, but again, let's see how it all... It's going to be a quiet week for the remaining days of the week. Thursday, Friday, Friday is going to be quiet. quiet. Yeah. Absolutely. Until something big falls through the roof. Yes, sir. And you do, nobody knows what that is. Well, like I said, maybe the cabinet announcement, um, <laughs> that, that might, that might um, at least give some, the market an excitement a bit. I think so. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, let's leave it there for today. Thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate also. your coming uh, on the program. Uh, Bolahan, I know, investment banker with Cordros Capital. What are the big stories as we speak? The World Bank has uh, given a hint as to what the state of the world economy is really like. You need to keep this in mind, emerging and uh, developing economies raising forecast of 4.6 in 2020 from 4% this year, says the growth momentum is still facing a number of vulnerabilities. Among this is the uh, trade fight between uh, the U.S. and a number of uh, countries and regions around the world. Of course, the renewed financial stress with central banks now being looked up to by investors around the world to provide some measure of safety net. The U.S. Fed is also, uh, the patience is becoming a little bit impatient 
if you go by the soundbite from Washington, from the U.S. over the last uh, few hours in terms of the outlook on rate cuts on the tap, on the card, by the U.S. Fed before the end of the year. But of course, the big story, we're expecting Nigeria's manufacturing data for the month of May. That didn't come true before the public holidays from the central bank and other independent sources who are focusing on that tomorrow. If it comes in, we'll see whether Nigeria's PMI aligns with the weakness that we've seen in the U.S., in China, in India this morning, from South Korea, from Eurozone, from the U.K., and elsewhere. That's some of the big stories you need to focus on. So enjoy your uh, day, everyone. And remember, the big story from here is the discovery of the latest Abacha Luz. Since 267 million U.S. dollars, that money will be shared, but there's no formula yet as to who gets the lion's share of that. That's it. You follow the loot? Yes, we're looking at the number. We're helping you keep tabs with the money. Uh, and that's coming through just to, as a reminder, as you uh, go about. Uh, a total of $1.270 billion of Abacha's stolen money, of Nigeria's money, which he stole from the, the country's coffers, has been discovered and returned to date. The lion's share of that, 1.04, had been returned to Nigeria since 1999. Today, from Switzerland, uh, the world, Nigeria keeps looking around the world, uh, digging all the grounds and looking into everybody's accounts whether we have some more money of the Abacha's loot. Of course, he died about 20 years ago, and we're still discovering more of these funds. Let's leave it there for today, everyone. Thank you very much, and I'll see you tomorrow.